In the previous video, we discussed the Golden Lie, a conspiracy conducted by the Golden Order to hide the sins of their past from the lands between. The Land of Shadow, an area hidden in plain sight from the world with a giant concealing veil, produced from the Great Tree now hidden underneath this veil. This illusion includes the Erd Tree, along with the entire center portion of Elden Ring's map, and sealed down by the six divine towers that surround this large body of water. Today, I want to discuss how Mikola could fall into this golden lie, and because of this illusion, Mikola abandoned Golden Order Fundamentalism and the Erd Tree to create his own, the Halig Tree, to grow himself out of his eternal youth, cure his twin sister of her scarlet rot affliction, and potentially communicate with Godwin to help him attack this illusionary veil from the roots below the lands between. Before we start this discussion, I should remind you all to make sure to like and subscribe because I forget to do that all the time with creators and videos that I enjoy, so do that if you want to. I appreciate it, let's get started. With the release of the DLC confirmed for June of this year, it's obviously forced me to rethink everything I once thought because the trailer has opened my eyes to so many different possibilities, especially in terms of Merica, her son Godwin, and of course Mikola. I believe these three characters are going to play a major role in the Shadow of the Erd Tree, with of course Mesmer playing into that plot as well. I believe he will lead us to understanding some different intentions with Merica and Godwin's Golden Order, along with Mikola's decision to leave that order. Which really got me thinking, did Mikola abandon Golden Order fundamentalism and create the Halig Tree to potentially communicate with his brother Godwin? Of course, it's been theorized to death at this point that Mikla created the Halig Tree to help cure his sister Melania of her Scarlet Rot and potentially to help him grow out of his eternal youth by literally transforming himself within a cocoon, like a butterfly. Of course, two demigod Empyreans creating a new life force to cure afflictions is going to attract many of those with said afflictions to hopefully provide help for them as well. But I haven't heard the relation between Mikola and Godwin discussed much. And if you have, please let me know in the comments because I would love to hear everything I can on this. After researching further, I'm starting to believe their relationship runs very deep. I'll try to explain why now. Anyone who has played Elden Ring is aware of the obvious references to Celtic history, mythology, and symbolism. With this in mind, I took a look at the traditional Celtic symbolism and I was surprised to see the glaring hints and links given to us by the developers. When thinking about the story that has been provided to us, the death of a demigod and the rebirth of another, there are many Celtic runes and symbols which seem to have been integrated into the lands between through the banners of the demigods and the storytelling elements that have been conjured from them. Mikola's Halig tree sigil is very closely linked to the Tree of Life from Irish origins, as well as the Halig Tree Guard and even Commander Nile, who is found within Castle Soul, sporting what looks similar to the Daranat and the Elumnat on their capes. In my research of these items in particular, I found the following information to be almost too coincidental. The Daranat, a symbol boasting an interwoven design and a name that comes from the Irish word doyer, which means oak tree. The knot is deprived from this word and the symbol represents the root system of an ancient oak tree. Like many Celtic knot symbols, the Dara knot is made up of intertwined lines with no beginning or ending. There's also the alum, which differs greatly in design, but their meanings are similar. The alum is thought to be a type of conifer or silver fir tree, similar to the ghostly trees throughout the mountaintops and surrounding Castle Soul. In ancient Celtic tree lore, evergreen fir trees were associated with the healing of a person's inner soul. So we have symbols representing a root system and the healing of a person's inner soul, which are fascinating descriptions that seem to coincide with this part of the theory, that Mikola is trying to communicate with Godwin via the roots of his halo tree and to somehow provide Godwin with a true death which is what Mikola wanted. According to the Golden Epitaph, a sword meant to commemorate the death of Godwin the Golden, its description reads, infused with the humble prayer of a young boy, 
O brother, Lord brother, please die a true death, which we can infer are Mikola's words. The wording and style used to describe these symbols got me thinking that there has to be some kind of link here, with the intertwined lines with seemingly no beginning or ending taking my immediate focus. Then I remembered Ouroboros, which represents the cycle of destruction and rebirth. Ouroboros is a highly recognized symbol that is shared across multiple ancient and modern civilizations mythos. The name Ouroboros comes from the ancient Greek language for tail eating. It's always shown as a circular symbol that depicts a snake or a dragon devouring its own tail, and that is used to explicitly represent the eternal cycle of destruction and rebirth. Ouroboros expresses the unity of all things, material and spiritual, which never disappear but perpetually change form in an eternal cycle of destruction and recreation. It represents the notion that life and energy never completely die, but are constantly transformed and renewed in an infinite cycle. This can be interpreted spiritually as an affirmation of the immortality of the soul, or as an invitation to embrace the process of change and transformation in life. I believe Mikola sympathizes with Godwin. He understands that he didn't die a true death, just like Mikola cannot live a true life if that life can never end. He wants to help him, just like how he wanted to help Melania with her rot. Because the Golden Order couldn't help them cure their afflictions, and potentially could have been a part of the plot to kill Godwin, Mikola abandoned it altogether and started creating his own Erd Tree. The Halic Tree, like I said, would be able to cure Melania of her rot, grow Mikola out of his eternal youth, and communicate with Godwin through the roots below the lands between. Godwin is clearly trying to spread his roots around as much as possible, so this would be the best way for Mikola to help his brother. Unfortunately, before he could complete any of these goals, Mikola was taken from the Halo Tree by Moog. Because of Mikola's Empyrean status, Moog can marry Mikola to become the lord of his own Moguin dynasty. But I've always found it hard to believe that Mikola would just allow himself to be taken so easily, especially with Melania guarding him at all times, but let's save all of that for another video. Bringing the attention back to the idea of the Dara and Alumnats, it's important for us to observe and look at some additional circular designs found in the surrounding area of the Halic Tree and Castle Sol. Taking a look at the castle's name initially, Sol meaning sun in Latin. There are references in game to what I believe is an eclipse. The banners from the castle depict a circle which is hollowed, which looks exactly like a full solar eclipse. There is a building found within the castle called Church of the Eclipse. When entering the area, the player will be met with a spirit worshipping at an altar, saying, O oh great sun, frigid son of soul, surrender yourself to the eclipse, grant life to the soulless bones. The eclipse shuttle can be found in this church as well. Its description reads, storied sword and treasure of castle soul that depicts an eclipsed sun drained of color. In soul, the sight of an eclipse inspires a dreadful awe, preventing an onlooker from averting his gaze. Its ash of war, known as death flare, reads as, set the lusterless sun ablaze with the prince of death's flames inflicting the death ailment upon foes. This isn't the only reference to the eclipse within Castle Soul. A spirit sitting within the battlements has some really interesting dialogue. Lord Mikola, forgive me. The sun has not been swallowed. Our prayers are lacking. Your comrade remains soulless. I will never set my eyes upon it now. Your divine halig tree. In particular, I want to draw attention to certain lines that lend themselves to this theory. Grant life to these soulless bones. The sun has not been swallowed. Our prayers are lacking. Your comrade remains soulless. When I first read this text in game, my immediate assumption was that this had to be related to how during a solar eclipse, the moon swallows the sun's light by covering it completely, instantly darkening the sky. Bradley Schaefer, a professor of astronomy at Louisiana State University in Baton Rouge, said, In most pre-modern cultures, the sun god was among the most powerful deities in the pantheon. An eclipse represented the destruction of that god, or at least a dire sign. With the placement of the spirit and the symbols around Castle Sun, I wanted to look into what a total eclipse might symbolize. 
reflection, renewal, and rebirth. Eclipses represent both endings and new beginnings in the spiritual realm. The darkness brought by the solar eclipse signifies releasing the old, letting go of the past, and embarking on a journey of renewal and rebirth. With the mention of letting go of the past, this could be used to describe the historic event of Godwin's death and how, collectively, they are trying to rectify this, embarking on a new journey, which I believe to be Mikola's journey into the Shadow Realm. Finally, a soulless comrade granting life to soulless bones. This has to be related to Godwin having only his soul killed and Mikola's journey of rebirth through the Shadow Realm. The key words I deciphered from this research were always renewal and rebirth, which again seem to show direct links to potentially what Mikola was planning with Godwin, or trying to achieve with Godwin. While Godwin would never be entirely renewed by reversing the effects of his partial death, it's possible that this renewal, in essence, could be a way of Mikola providing a full and true death, removing Godwin's affliction of being a pestilent prince of death and a husk of his former self. The link with Rebirth can be brought straight to Mikola himself, as it's highly theorized that the Halo Tree was primarily initiated to aid Mikola's removal of his own affliction by being eternally young. With these in mind, and all the circular symbols representing the total eclipse, which represents renewal and rebirth, the Dara and Illuminats being linked to the root systems of the Ur Tree, which could be used for communication, and the significance of destruction and rebirth from the Ouroboros, I believe it's entirely plausible for this theory to hold merit and substance. And if I'm correct in my thinking, then maybe this is why we can find the ring of a two-headed snake eating its own never-ending tail on Mikola's hand, which is of course known to take us into the land of shadow. The fallen leaves are certainly telling a story, but maybe these leaves didn't all originate from the Erd Tree like we all thought. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to join our community Discord where these theories have been originating and discussed. We'd love to have more people involved in these conversations, so a link will be in the description if you want to join in on the fun. Thanks again, everyone, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.